Hello everyone, welcome to this video Advanced Alteryx Interview Preparation. In this video, we will discuss 10 advanced interview questions and I will give the links to practical examples. The topics would include macros, regular expressions, unstructured data formats like JSON and XML, advanced formulas and visualization. These are the questions which we are going to discuss. Now let's get started with the first one. Explain the various passing techniques in Alteryx, which includes HTML, JSON, and XML. So let's start with our answer. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is the standard language for creating web pages. Alteryx does not provide any inbuilt tool to pass HTML. To pass it, we will be using firstly the text input and the download tool to fetch the data from web sources. Then we can use a combination of pass tools like regex and text to columns, followed by transform tools like summarize, cross tab, and finally the preparation tools as per our need to transform the data into structured format. You can refer to the video number 22 in this playlist, which shows web scraping the Nifty 50 website, which is an HTML passing type. Next, you can refer to video 34 where I have shown analysis of Alteryx job posting scrape from a live job portal. Here, the base format is HTML, but the data for the job postings are in JSON format. So it will be a good example for you to try. The last one is video 27, where I have shown how to web scrape the IMD website and download maps and graphs. Moving on to JSON, it stands for Java, script object notation and is often used in web services and APIs. Alteryx has tools designed to pass the JSON data, which is called as a JSON pass tool. It helps to convert the JSON data into tabular format for analysis. Video number 26 shows us how to web script using JSON passing and we will be using the World Bank API link. XML stands for extensible markup language and is commonly used for storing data. Like JSON, XML tool is also present as an inbuilt tool and is called as XML pass tool, which helps to convert XML data into structured format. In video 25, the web scraping of X World Bank API link using XML passing is shown. The second question is how to configure email alert for a workflow. For that, we have to create an event by, creating on, by clicking on this event and enabling the event. This gives us this box. There are, the event can be run when before any workflow is done, after the workflow is done, after run with errors, after run without errors, and it can be disabled. Next is to give the SMTP and port. SMTP is the mail server link. So I'll make server name. If you have any username and password, you can give that. Then as an email format, we can give the from to subject and even we can attach any attachments which needs to be sent along this. The common ones are the logs. The third question is how can SQL code be transformed into Alteryx workflows? So Alteryx has tools which can be used to transform SQL. The select tool in Alteryx is similar to the input sorry select tool in SQL is similar to the input data tool group by is summarize order by is sort join has a correspondence to join and join multiple where to filter to select selected columns we can use select tool distinct is unique is null for that we can use a function is null in the formula tool like and case insensitive we can use the function starts with for case, we can use the formula tool and the if function. For union, we will have to use the union tool along with formula. All these are shown in the video number 17. Do refer to that. It would be helpful. And next question is to explain the various dynamic tools. Dynamic tools are used to manipulate the data dynamically. It provides the flexibility and adaptability to the workflows especially when dealing with large data sets or situations where data structure may change. They help to automate the data manipulation tasks by applying certain rules and conditions. 
The first among them is dynamic rename as the name suggests it helps to rename the columns in a data set based on specific criteria. Dynamic select helps to select or deselect the columns and dynamic replace helps in replacement of values within the data set based on dynamic rules. In video 22, I have shown the examples of all these three that's the dynamic rename, dynamic select and dynamic replace to replace the null values. Additionally, you can refer to video 19 where I have shown dynamic extraction of current month's file and load it into the SQL server. Explain different types of macros. There are three types of macros, standard, batch and iterative, which are commonly used. There is one more type as well. So the purpose of standard is in this various tools are encapsulated into a single tool to perform a specific task. In batch, we perform same operations on multiple inputs, which are defined using control parameter. For iterative, we repeat a process until a specific condition is met. For our, our understanding, I'll give you an analogy. Like for standard, we can refer this to as a function in programming or SQL, which can be reused multiple times. A batch, it can be referred to as a for loop in programming where the number of times the iteration will happen is defined. So here we use a control parameter for it. In iterative, it's like a while loop in programming where we are repeating the process or looping it, but we do not know exactly how many times the workflow is going to run. There is a condition based on which it will stop, but we do not know the exact number of times it is going to loop. You can refer to video number 13, which shows examples of standard macro and batch macro. And then 14, 15, 16 shows various iterative macro examples, which will help us to find Armstrong number, the next prime number and factorial of a number. Next is the difference between dynamic tools and macro. Let's go to the types. As we have already seen, there are three types of both dynamic tools and macros. Availability. Dynamic tools are built, uh, inbuilt tools available in all tricks. Macros have to be built by users, so they are custom built. Purpose. They are used for specific dynamic data operations, while macros are various tools encapsulated into a single tool to perform a specific function. The context. Dynamic tools can be used only within a workflow, but macros can be used across different workflows. In video 7, I have so shown the Alteryx macro along with dynamic input to display the Excel sheet data dynamically. The seventh question is to explain the Regex tool. The Regex tool is used for pattern matching and extracting data from text fields. When it comes to output methods in the Regex tool, there are a few different options available. First is replace, which would substitute a specific pattern or string with another pattern. Tokenize is breaking down a text into smaller tokens based on defined delimiters. This functionality is similar to the text to column tool, but it provides more flexibility. Parse is used to extract values in one column into new columns or multiple columns. And finally, the match, which is used for finding occurrences of a specified pattern within a text string. You can refer to video 18, where I've shown Alteryx macro and regex for password validation. What's the difference between crosstab and transpose? The purpose of crosstab is to summarize the data by pivoting columns into rows based on specific fields, while transpose converts rows into columns and vice versa. Usage crosstab will be useful for aggregating data or creating summary tables, while transpose is helpful for restructuring data sets with different row and column structures. In video 11, I have shown how to convert an Excel pivot table and filter the results dynamically where I have used both the crosstab and transpose and which will give an idea of where we can use each of them. Ninth question is to explain the reporting tools. Reporting tools in Alteryx allows to build reports and output them in various formats like PDF, HTML, Excel, Word and even PowerPoint. We can add charts and maps as well as tables of data and text. The reporting tools are divided majorly into three chunks. The report elements where we have interactive chart, report, footer, 
report header, image, report text and table tools which are commonly used. Report layout has layout and visual layout. Report output has email, render and insight. Refer to video 30 where I have shown a stock market summary dashboard from the Nifty 50 website data which we are scraping using HTML. In video, so this video number 30 will show us graphs. In video 29, you can see year over year sales report with dynamic date input in Alteryx. This is a Tableau structure which is using a table tool and various layouts to merge it. Video 34, analysis of Alteryx jobs posting script from a live job portal. This is a combination of again table and graphs. Finally, the video number one, which is Alteryx hands-on interview questions. It will show various advanced functions of reporting like how to add custom or sorry conditional formatting to the table tool which are being used to a type of conditional formatting is being used in this video a last question is to explain the excel features transformed by you we can uh, various excel features can be transformed using alteryx so i have sort of divided them into four categories one is cleaning and formatting which includes removing duplicates handling missing data transforming data types and formatting dates and times. Second is data restructuring, where we can create pivot tables, transpose rows and columns, split or combine columns, and rearrange data. Third is joining and blending data, where we can combine data from multiple Excel sheets or different Excel files or even other data sources by joining or blending them together. And this we can do based on specific conditions as well. Finally, aggregation and calculation. So we can use Alteryx tools for grouping, summarizing, creating calculated fields and performing complex calculations. In video 21, I have shown to convert an Excel pivot table and filter the results dynamically. In video 24, I am showing how to decode Excel formulas like nested if, sum ifs, index, match and VLOOKUP. In video 32, I am showing to create weekly reports using batch macro for a month. So in this video, the output will be divided based on the user inputs to different Excel files. Lastly, this is an interview tip. So all these 10 courses are not an exhaustive list. You will have to prepare more. So these are the things which you should prepare. First, the basic questions would be about the tools which are being used. Second, it's about a gallery or the server, which involves deployment and scheduling workflows, handling missing values. Sorry, this is, yeah. Apart from that, we have few common questions like scenario-based questions will be asked to you. What are the challenges you have faced? Project description, how would you debug your workflow and project documentation? These all things will get some idea if you're looking to the playlist which I have provided. And the advanced topics, which may not be asked everywhere, but if you know it, it will be well and good. So it's kind of good to have like statistical methods, predictive modeling, machine learning tools, spatial analytics, and Python integration. Python integration I have shown as a sample video. This you can refer to the playlist. I hope you like the video. If so, please share, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching.